Hey everybody, Dylan Distraction here, coming to you live from Batlantic Studios at the Split Decision Comics Crew Headquarters. I just want to do a quick back of the drawing board, show you what's on my drawing table, and let you know that the Kickstarter campaign for issue 4 of my series, Archive the Warhol Odyssey, uh, goes live Monday, July 2nd at 11am. And the countdown is on right now. I've created a countdown clock. So go to thewarhood.com right now and you can see the countdown. So, um, yeah, I'm doing some uh, Patreon um, some, uh, reward drawings today. So uh, patreon.com slash Batlantic Studios if you want to check that out. Uh, all the Patreon levels get physical rewards except for the lowest level. So uh, doing little sketch cards for people. Um, so I'm working on that. So I'll show you some of those. And yeah, thank you so much for your continued support. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a wild ride and I'm super excited for issue four of Archive of the Warhood Odyssey. Uh, I'm working on drawing that right now. Um, Thewarhood.com to see the countdown clock. Um, yeah, I've been working on doing the, the layout for the Kickstarter and Kickstarters are a lot of work, and I, but I really enjoy doing them. It's, it's so much fun to be able to create something and get it to people. It's such a, such a thrill. So uh, I'm going to flip the camera right now, show you what I'm working on. Um, all right, flipping the camera. All right, here's what's on my drawing table. We have Patreon rewards. So this is the largest. All right, that's the 9 by 12. Those are the, what are these, 6 by 8. And then these are the smaller sketch cards that go out to Patreon supporters. So patreon.com slash Batlantic Studios. If you want to get one of these, I'm doing a bunch of them today. Beautiful day outside. It's like to be able to be drawing stuff for people and yeah I'm, I'm excited for the kickstarter to go live monday july 2nd and um yeah go to the warhood.com if you want to see the countdown Please like, thumbs up, share this video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. If you just want to watch me draw, that's cool too. So yeah, I did a bunch of um, Batman themed sketch cards for people. So these are going out to Patreon backers. And I got a bunch more I'm gonna do. So thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters, and these will be heading out to you real soon. Try to send out something every month, whether it's a digital update or a physical reward. Some of these smaller sketch cards, I'm going to save them up just because shipping costs so much. I'll save them up and do like three in a box, three in an envelope. Just to save on shipping. You'll still get 12 a year. Just won't uh, maybe get them over. You'll get them over like three or four boxes instead of one a month. So that's 12 boxes.
This is a uh, yeah, watercolor brush I fill with a couple of drops of ink. I usually use that ink because it doesn't clog them as much. And then I put a little bit of ink in there, a little bit of water, and then it gives me like a nice gray wash tone I can use. Mr. Ben Bishop, I think, gave me that trick. Told me that trick. But yeah, try it out. Let me know how it works for you. You can get these at craft stores, art stores. You get a set of them with different size brushes. So if you have any questions about materials or technique, shoot, fire away. Happy to answer anything I can. If I don't know the answer, I will make it up. I'll pretend I know. And go to patreon.com slash batlantic studios if you want to get one of these. If you would like a sketch card from me, go do it. Or not. It's up to you. I'm not the boss of you. It's kind of a crazy looking poison item. Yeah, Mike, that is why I switched to this, because I like pretty consistent gray, and I was having a heck of a time I'm trying to keep a consistent gray using, you know, just ink in a cup. Um, so I'd have two of them going. So that one's that shade of gray, and then I got another one over here It's a little bit darker. You can see it's not a lot darker, but it's a little bit darker. And then you could have another one that's really dark. I usually try to keep them pretty light though. I want the, the inks to be the blackest thing. I don't want the wash to be the blackest thing on the page, usually. Splatter. trick if you're looking for gray tones especially on like like a textured thing like something like this maybe sort of things like and, but with stuff like this it's just uh, this is just a sketch card for a patreon backer patreon.com slash Atlantic Studios I don't want to get too noodly you know because I got six more days I want to do today so you can do stuff like this and you can do a little gray what gray tones Detail like that. 
have any advice for me? Having trouble with eyes and mouths and sometimes noses. Um, what trouble are you having? What particular, is there like female noses or men's angry mouths or expressions or is there a particular thing that's tricky? Because really, I mean, if you're looking at like um, mouths and noses, they can be pretty simple. Like if you're like, oh, I just want to draw, like, oh, there's eyes and there's a mouth, you know. But it's like, what scenario gets tough about them? And yeah, my recommendation always is have a mirror. So right out of focus here, I have a mirror on the back of my drawing table, chick, and I use that mirror to um, do expressions or um, look at details of teeth or irises or pupils or anything like that. So my recommendation is always have a mirror and figure out what part of what part of the that anatomy is throwing you off. Is it eyelashes of women? You know, that can be a little tricky. Sometimes that's a matter of using a specific tool. Um, different um, pens can create different effects. So if you have like a brush pen, or uh, you might find it's easier to, to get a consistent woman's eyelash. Trouble with expressions, yeah. Expressions are tricky. Expressions are, that's, yeah, I'm here, I hear you, man. That is tough. All right, good piece of paper, we'll do a drawing lesson. So, expressions. The way I do them is I get a sketchbook, right, and I just start drawing heads. And this is a great trick with heads is that, which I recently picked up from my, my instructor, Philip Seavey, who does comics experience courses. Um, this idea of drawing this, it's like a circle, but then you chop it and flatten the sides of it, right? And on those flattened sides, you draw a circle with an X. And depending on which way that circle with the X is pointing, well, that shows your face up or down. And then from the corner there, you go down and make a line like that. And then you got a pretty generic death stroke head. So then if you're going to be doing expressions, again, always best to have a mirror. Um on your drawing table and always look at it and look at foreheads, look at look at how your your eyes move, if you're surprised, right? There's always that sort of eyebrows up if you're startled, mouth agape slightly, right? And then just start fill up a page, fill up a sketchbook with with faces and heads and eyes and anything that you're struggling with try to really give that your full focus and make those things that you're not great at things that you're really good at and that's that's tricky that's tough because I know with me and <laughs> taking courses or reading um, instructional books you always tend to want to do the stuff that you're best at and it's tough to force yourself to to try to to push and and improve and I, I hear you in the same way where it's like oh yeah I'm, I love drawing angry faces because that's you know the stuff I grew up reading a lot of 90s action stuff so it was a lot of grimacing and grunting but when it comes to people looking happy or sad or and some expressions are tricky like a lot of expressions are tricky, but particularly ones that are subtle, like happy, unsure, contemplative, uneasy, like these really sort of subtle variations on of human emotion can be tricky. So just, and I struggle with them, I, I'm always working on trying to get better at it. You know, there's some people that just nail it and they don't even have to, you know, they have their go-to like, oh yeah, this is when somebody's angry or when somebody's happy or when somebody's sad, I have, I have that go-to expression. But yeah, I always, yeah, I struggle with it and I work on them constantly.
and it's something that um, I'm getting better at. And so, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like, oh, I have everything figured out. Best to just keep working. So another one for eyes that I, I practice eyes all the time, Jake. So I fill up sketchbooks. You'll see, you'll see in my sketchbooks, it's just a lot of this. And I do these constantly just to get comfortable with them because eyes are so important in storytelling and, and, and describing your character and their and how they are and it's good to do them in different sizes, different shapes. And also look at any artist that you're a fan of and see the tricks and techniques they use, right? So I do a lot of these. And then with noses too, noses are tricky. The thing about noses I've found helps me is drawing three circles, right? So you draw three circles and then that is the nostrils and the ball of the nose, the center mass of the nose. That's what I do. I picked that up somewhere. I'm not sure where. But the good thing about the three circle technique is that you can kind of move it around, right? So that's a nose pointed upwards. These are all pretty rough. Pardon my rough drawings. There's a nose pointed downwards, right? Because you have those. So hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, I'm here all day. You're welcome, Jake. Yeah, so yeah, no, just keep drawing. That's the main thing. That's what I'm doing. That's what everybody's doing. Just keep drawing. Don't ever stop. The more you do it, the better and more confident you'll be at it. None of us pretend to have everything figured out. I'm not the, yeah, I'm not a... The, the thing I always say is like, I, Alex Ross is, a, is alive. Art Adams is alive. They are still making comic books, right? So if you're like, oh, I gotta be the best. No, those guys are still alive and doing it. You'll always be less good than them. So don't try to worry about competing with, you know, guys like that because those guys have been doing it for forever and they're phenomenal and you're not gonna be better than them. <laughs> so don't let that pressure or stress make you give up and that's the way I see it it's like oh yeah this could be better everything I everything people do could be better you know Alex Ross is still is still making comics Art Adams still making comics so don't worry about it your stuff isn't gonna be as good as theirs my stuff's not gonna be as good as theirs and that's kind of a relief there's no pressure right I don't know if maybe that's a silly way to look at it, but it kind of makes me, it kind of is reassuring to me for some reason. <laughs> so that's penciling stuff, but say you want to put in some inks, I use these brush pens. And the great thing about these brush pens, you can get, a, you can throw some nice line weights, right? And I like inking. I know some people with digital and with reproduction you don't really even need to ink anymore a lot of the time because it's not like the, the the old days when the pencil just wasn't gonna get picked up by the huge camera that was taking a photo of the page now you can do tight pencils or digital inks and they're almost indistinguishable in from traditional pen and ink in my opinion but all the artists I grew up watching and, and enjoying and reading used pen ink. So I've kind of tried to train and force myself to, it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel, it feels different to me. There's a texture about it maybe or a something. There's something about it that feels different. I think my work benefits from doing traditional inks and so that's what I do, but it might change something. But all the artists I grew up reading do traditional inks, so I, so I do traditional inks. 
Not that that's better or worse. I don't know. It's just different. So, there's some stuff. Some faces and some heads. And as you can see with my pencils, my pencils are pretty rough. I couldn't imagine someone trying to ink over my stuff. And if I was to try to do finished pencils, it'd look weird. Just because I don't do tight enough pencils. So, I can kind of look surprised. And also, my stuff is kind of cartoony, I know it. You might not think that, looking at it immediately, but... I feel it is. Jake, one guy on YouTube told me that drawing with ink makes you more confident in drawing because you can, because you can, because you can't erase. Oh, yeah, or makes you terrified to start. I've had that before too, where I've penciled something really, really tight. And when I went to ink it, I was like, oh no, I don't want to mess up these pencils because I really spent a long time on these pencils and the ink, there's no, uh, you know, there's no going back. And, but the way around that is I do digital roughs now. And so the inks are always over a uh, copy. Even if I'm, I'll even show you, even if I'm, uh, on the page, right, so that was digital, digital uh, roughs, and then red line, and then some tighter pencils, and then I'm going to ink on this board. So, it's a little bit different way of doing it, but that's what's been working for me. And that's what issue number four of Archive the Warhood Odyssey, go to thewarhood.com right now to see the countdown clock I made, that's all going to be inked like that. That's one of the pages from it. Jake. Yeah, well, you sure. Or just snap a screenshot if you want to. <clears throat> it's really not much. I mean, we're pretty rough. But yeah, the top, the top tip, top tips I would do are, right, draw ovals and then draw an X. Connect that down and then that down. That's your eyebrow. That's your nose line. Mouth is somewhere around there. Ear is at the X. Neck comes out from there. Even if you just fill a sketchbook with those. And then you have bridge of the nose. Three little balls for the nose. Mouth is just a shape. Kind of shows you your chin line, jaw line, cheek. That's kind of my go-to face. <laughs> if I had to like, you gotta draw a face right now, I'd probably do something like that. So yeah, go to thewarhood.com right now for the countdown for the next issue. Issue number four, Archive of the World Odyssey. It's gonna melt your brain. Guys, you get distracting me. I gotta get back to work. Can't be messing around with this. I got stuff to do. Cool. We don't have any questions. Happy to help. Anytime. You got questions, I got answers.
Heck yeah. Thanks, man. Keep drawing. Go to thewarhood.com to see the Kickstarter countdown clock. And go to patreon.com slash Batlantic Studios if you want to get one of these sweet sketch cards sent to you. Tell your friends. Yeah, and keep filling up a sketchbook, man. It's awesome. That's what I do. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera. Hey, go to thewarhood.com right now to see the Kickstarter countdown clock. Thanks so much for your time and attention. I really appreciate it. it was so much fun to draw for you today. Please like, thumbs up, share, comment on this video. Um, yeah, Kickstarter launches July 2nd, Monday, 11 a.m. Go to thewarhood.com to see the Kickstarter countdown clock. Uh, Patreon.com slash Batlantic Studios if you want to get a sketch card like one of these sent to you. All right. Thank you a little bunch. All right. Say that again. Bye.